Hey guys, so I'm putting my hair into a ponytail right now. It's about seven o'clock in the morning and it is raining outside here in sunny Southern California. And when I say rain, it is truly raining and thundering. So we're keeping it simple with a ponytail. I'm just using a wide tooth rat tail comb to smooth it all up. And um, I'm gonna be braiding today, so I don't need anything extravagant. Simplicity and comfort. What's up guys? So we're doing a little eating before we go into school, right? Oh, um, it's raining today, like actually raining. Um, it was raining all night, which is great for here for Southern California because y'all, it never rains. And just to have some cold weather, thank you, Lord. I be wanting to feel like, you know, I see all these people on my social media who live in Denver or places where it snows, it's really cold. And I'm like, I want to experience that. Anyways, so that's the deal for today. Puffy jackets and hoodies. Catch y'all later. So today on my client, I am installing knotless braids. This is her first time getting knotless braids. And she has a very thick canvas that I will be working on today. So what you see me doing here in this clip, I am actually parting out her hair. And um, pre-parting is just going to save me time um, in the long run. So I'm gonna take about 30 minutes um, to part her hair out and uh, I will show you guys the rest when I'm done. After I make my first part, I'm going to cornrow. So cornrowing is going to number one, keep all of the hair in place for that entire section. So this way when I go to part the next row, I won't have to you know keep picking at this and making sure my part is super neat. On to section number two. So I'm using my rat tail comb again, my fine rat tail comb to carve out my part. And then I'm gonna follow up with the point of the rat tail comb just to ensure that the line is straight. And then I am going to clip the hair up and start cornrowing. As you can see, I'm just doing a basic cornrow, nothing fancy, nothing too extravagant. This is literally just to get the hair out of the way I can't tell you guys or stress how much time this saves. I learned this technique from Braid Rebel. She is on Instagram and you guys need to check her out if you want more braid tips as well. Now we're at the top of her head and as you can see, I am still following this cornrow pattern. Um, each cornrow I'm starting, you know, on the opposite end and that is just to not confuse myself and still to keep everything in order. And it's to make sure I can really see the foundation of what I am creating. And as I braid, you know, and you take down each braid um, to do your part, you can you know edit a little bit you know you can use your comb and make it a little bit neater and whatnot so this is a great method you guys check it out and um i want to add that i used black castor oil on my client's scalp today um her hair is very thick and she said you know that she does use uh particular oils and things but i just added some more oil to her scalp just to ensure that you know everything was more moisturized and sealed in here is a final look of what everything looks like once it's all braided up and it looks really good time to get it braided so here is another hack I've actually only been trying for about a week now. It is to pre-twist your parts. So once you have made your first part, you know, of for your actual squares, you're going to just twist out the hair so that way it's out of your way and you can see your foundation. Can't tell you guys or stress how much preparation is just going to help you to braid faster, braid neater, and just, you know, keep everything flowing. And I learned that method from Braid Barbie and she is amazing and so sweet and both of these braiders are so talented and it's an honor to even get to you know say that I learned something from them so 
check out both of their Instagrams. And if you are a fellow braider or want to learn how to braid on yourself, I suggest trying both of these methods out on yourself just to see if it saves you any time. And um, just pre-parting in general helps you to see like, oh, this kind of doesn't look straight. This does look straight. So I was doing a little bit of chit chat in there, but I am feeding in the pieces of Kanekalon hair into her hair um, the same way that I added into my own hair. I used four pieces and um, even though her hair is thick at the root, it is up to you as the braider um, to adjust the hair that you're adding in to um, according to the thickness of your client's hair or of your own hair. The, what you saw me do, I had put gel on my fingertips and that's just to make sure as I braid down, the, her real hair is being tucked into the braid and it's blending in. Here is a video of her hair before it was dipped. I have separated her hair in half. I'm applying mousse to her hair. I'm running low, but I apply the mousse to the ends of the braids and I apply it um, on the top of the braids. Now, I don't apply too much to her roots just because, again, she's very natural. We did blow out her hair just a little bit and we don't want everything to revert. We do want everything to stay and, you know, still look sleek and, you know, neat, but we don't want it to revert. So I'm not putting mousse on there. I've already used gel. So you just look through your braids um, at the ends and then if everything looks good, get your hot water and you dip. Once again, guys, dipping is a very, very serious thing. So please make sure you take precaution and have as many towels as you need to have. I usually have about two to three hand towels with me. One hand towel is going to go onto the client's shoulder. I just do that for my own safety and liability purposes. The other hand towel is on my wrist or elbow or on my shoulder. So it's in very close uh, range so as soon as I am done dipping the hair I can grab the towel and basically wring that boiling hot water out of her braids now guys steam burns steam can burn the skin and the scalp so be very cautious when you're dipping that you're not burning your client's scalp now I'm just removing the boiling pot from her braids and I'm just gonna let some of that steam escape before I actually smooth it down. Um, it was very hot and again, I don't wanna burn myself. So I'm just letting some of that steam escape and then I'm just gonna gently squeeze it together and squeeze the hot water out. And you're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. I apply the mousse onto the braids. I do this just prior to dipping so that way once it's dipped, um, the moisture and the oils and conditioning properties in the mousse actually seals into her hair and seals into the uh, synthetic hair on the ends. Here is the final look on my client's medium knotless braids. She looks adorable. This was her first time getting them and they were so lightweight for her and she was so excited to have them. As you guys can see, even if you have thick hair, you can get knotless braids. Thanks for watching day three vlogmas. Bye y'all.